So I'd like to make clear my own point of view in advance. I think that the libertarian socialist concepts, I think that these are fundamentally correct and that they are the proper and natural extension of classical liberalism into the era of advanced industrial society. Man is born to inquire and create. This is the essence of human nature. Man never regards what he possesses as so much his own as what he does. Whatever does not spring from a man's free choice remains alien to his true nature. He does not perform it with truly human energies. but merely with mechanical exactness. And if a man acts in a mechanical way, we may admire what he does, but we despise what he is. Man's essential attribute is his freedom. And since truly human action is that which flows from inner impulse, it seems as if all peasants and craftsmen might be elevated into artists. That is, men who love their labor, improve it by their own inventive skill, and thereby cultivate intellect, ennoble their character, and refine their pleasures. I think the issues are of really quite considerable contemporary significance. Classical liberal ideas, in their essence, are profoundly anti-capitalist. The classical liberal view develops from a certain concept of human nature, one that stresses the importance of diversity and free creation. This view is in fundamental opposition to capitalism, with its wage slavery, its alienated labor, and its hierarchic and authoritarian principles of organization. A large number of our really fundamental problems stem from a kind of incompatibility and uh, inappropriateness of capitalism to a modern society. Capitalist economic relations perpetuate a form of bondage, as every spokesman for the Enlightenment would insist. When a man, out of his own free choice, chooses to inquire or create, he becomes in his own terms an artist but when work is external to the worker and not part of his nature, he does not fulfill himself in his work and is deprived of his species character of free conscious activity and productive life. The political state throughout history has meant the government of men by ruling classes. A democratic system with the kind of representation that's direct in the sense that representatives are directly answerable to the social group for which they speak. This is something obviously very different than our system of representation. A democratic system functions within a very narrow range in a capitalist democracy. And even within this narrow range, its functioning is enormously biased by the concentrations of private power and by the authoritarian and passive modes of thinking that are induced by autocratic institutions. It's a truism, but one that must be constantly stressed that capitalism and democracy are ultimately quite incompatible. I think it's accurate to say that a corporate elite of managers and owners governs the economy and the political system as well. The people do exercise an occasional choice among the rival faction of the ruling class. The individuals who compete for power, they express a conservative ideology, basically the interests of the corporate elite. It's this interest that is served primarily by the overseas empire and the growing system of military capitalism at home. and their interests are the national interest. 
Although an immense effort of propaganda is carried on to conceal these facts, nonetheless, these facts, they remain. Democracy is largely a sham when the system is controlled by any form of autocratic elite, whether of owners, managers, the state bureaucracy, or whatever. Under these conditions of authoritarian domination, classical liberal ideals cannot be realized. Man will not be free to inquire and create. He will remain a fragment of a human being, a tool in the productive process directed from above. We have today the technical and material resources to meet man's animal needs. We have not developed the cultural and moral resources that make possible the humane and rational use of our material wealth and power. Conceivably, classical liberal ideals in their libertarian socialist form are achievable. But if so, only by a popular revolutionary movement rooted in wide strata of the population and committed to the elimination of repressive and authoritarian institutions, state and private. To create such a movement is the challenge we face and must meet if there's to be an escape from contemporary barbarism.